One woman's story of struggle to triumph from her humble Mississippi roots can certainly be a blueprint for any of us, no matter our situation. Right about that, straight ahead, the Blackberry memories of this Mid-South native. This weekend will serve as a homecoming for this accomplished Mississippi native and Dr. Margaret Wilson has to tell those accomplishments and how she got where she is today in a new book. The physician's Blackberry Memories is more than just a lovely story though. It can also inspire readers that anything really is possible with enough hard work. And before her book signing in the Magnolia State this weekend, she's live with us this morning. We appreciate you joining us. Margaret, we could talk to you for the full hour you have accomplished so much. You have created your own product. You have started an urban garden in, in Atlanta, in addition to being a physician. How did you find time, first of all, to write Blackberry Memories? Was, why was it so important to you to tell the story? Well, uh, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, I have been writing Blackberry Memories for about 20 years. Some of it was so painful, though, that I had to put it down from time to time and just, uh, you know, restart. But uh, it's a story about perseverance. And uh, I grew up in North Mississippi in the Delta area in the 50s and 60s. Uh, it was very challenging because my family was very poor. Mm -hmm. And I really started writing the book to try to uh, profile some of the people who intersected my life and who really made a difference. So that was one of the uh, inspirations for writing it was to just profile ordinary people in my community who taught me about hard work, loving your neighbor, um, being a good citizen. And so I finally, these last uh, couple of years with uh, the uh, pandemic and I just decided I'm going to just finish this up. So that was my challenge, and I did finish it. Uh, it was published uh, in 1st of December. Wow. Wow, that is excellent. Dr. Wilson, as you look back at some of those challenges and, of course, some of the triumphs, is there anything about your own life that even surprises you that you were able to really overcome so much and still succeed? Well, I just... Um, <laughs> I just realized that you have to talk to yourself. You have to sometimes encourage yourself um, and realize that anything that you want in life, it's going to take a little hard work. And if you don't really mind working, mm. uh, it will work out for you. I picked cotton in the Mississippi area uh, as a child uh, for $2 a day and uh, chop cotton too, we call it chop, but it was actually cleaning the cotton out, but for $2 a day, and that just, uh, one day when it felt like it was about 105 degrees out there, I decided I am just going to work hard in school, mm. I'm going to get good grades, and I'm going to go to college because I don't want this to be my lifestyle forever. Mm. And so I just really had to self-talk sometime and encourage myself. Uh, and it can be done. You talk about uh, your your mindset. I'm curious, we see cotton balls as part of your decor. Is that to <laughs> remind yourself? Like for instance, in the pandemic, instead of sitting on the couch and gaining five or 10 pounds like I did, you actually <laughs> accomplished something. You know, is, is that part of that mindset, reminding yourself what you will never allow again in your life? Yes, absolutely. I really, uh, I have, I had an artist to do some of the artwork in the book, and one of the pictures depicts cotton, and there are people all around it, and I call it Cotton is King, because in my family, cotton was king. We, we grew up a few acres of cotton, but that was how we made our basic uh, living and, and really uh, provided for us for the whole year. And my mother, who was a famous quilter, was my inspiration, too, for the book. I dedicated a portion to her, and she was a quilter with a lot of her pieces hanging up on, uh, used to be Bill Street, but the Center for Southern Folklore in mm -hmm. Memphis. And one of her pieces is a cotton bowl quilt, which, which I'll have on display tomorrow. Uh, but cotton was king, really, and I have, <laughs> I have the cotton here in my home to just remind me on a daily basis that right. uh, that 
that it was. I do have to ask, ask you quickly, uh, Dr. Wilson, before we uh, run out of time, Blackberry Memories, why that title? Well, Blackberry Memories is because there was a week or two, and I remember as a kid, that we only had blackberries. Mm. We picked back blackberries and we sold them too to make a little extra money. And we had blackberries in the freezer that year. And that was about all we had to eat for about a week. So we just figured out ways to cook them or, you know, add a little something to them. And so I always thought I would call it blackberry uh, winter. But uh, of course, that title was already taken. So Blackberry Memories actually became a, a better title because well, there are a lot. That's a great title. Yeah, right. And that, that two week <laughs> period is important because a leather lesson is strike while the iron is hot. Don't just sit around. We so admire all your work. 2 p.m. at the, uh, at the hey. library there. We've put that on the screen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Yes. Wilson. Get the going. A lot of folks are going to come out to see tomorrow. you. Yes, all your. And I will all, have books. Oh, I will have that, books, but you can also get them on uh, online: Amazon, Walmart.com, Target.com, Barnes and Noble. So right. they are available. She's it's everywhere great, for sure. A great lesson. Thank for you so us much. All. all right.